Hello, and welcome to On Point. I'm Mary Peronian. Experts say the COVID-19 pandemic has been terrible for mental health across the U.S. and the world. But how much of that is tied to our use of social media? Many Americans have been spending more free time on social media platforms such as TikTok and Instagram to keep themselves entertained during the lockdown. Recode reported the average American spent 82 minutes on social media in 2020. That's seven minutes more than the year before. It has also been one of the only ways some family members and friends could feel as if they are together. But how has all this extra time on social media affected users' mental health? In the journal Computers in Human Behavior, one study found that excessive use of social media during the pandemic may have helped people stay informed and connected to peers, but still had a bad effect on mental health. Experts fear social media helps spread false beauty standards, especially for women. Unrealistic beauty filters add to the gap between social media image and reality. As one psychology expert told Women's Health magazine, there's a link between Instagram use and anxiety and depression. Social media use can also cause low self-esteem and make some users dissatisfied with their body or physical appearance. On Point's Catherine Hernandez has more on the story. Thank you so much, Mary. Joining us today are our guests, clinical director of One Method and licensed clinical psychologist, Brooke Gilbertson, CSUN student, Lexi Sorensen, and actress, journalist, and influencer, Janelle Marie. Okay, thank you guys for joining. Our first question is going to be for Brooke. Uh, social media is a powerful force in our lives. What damage can that do to one's mental and physical health? That's a big question. Um, and I think it's very relevant in this time because uh, especially in a pandemic, you know, that we've been in, people are turning more to their phones and technology. So we're spending a lot of time on social media. Um, the question you asked was what damage can that do? Um, I think there's a lot of benefits and kind of gains because it can make us feel connected to some, in, to some extent, but what damage I think it can run the risk of creating a culture where, you know, young women in particular, but, but really everybody's kind of comparing one another uh, to everybody else's like highlight reel, you know, and people generally don't advertise or, you know, take photos or video themselves when they're just like sitting on the couch or maybe having an argument or just eating dinner, you know, and the kind of day to day stuff. They tend to, you know, advertise and post on things when, life is exciting and beautiful and from what angle and hand curated and selected. So I think the damage can be that, you know, you can look at somebody else's uh, social media and think, wow, they must have it perfect um, compared to my life, you know, and it's not the whole picture. So they think the damage of comparison um, and comparison really is the thief of joy. You know, when we're comparing ourselves to other people, I think, uh, it just robs us of our ability to appreciate like what we have going on. And it's just never the full picture. So I think it can make other people think my life, you know, compared to this person or that person is just not so great when it really doesn't tell the whole story. In the last year, ever since the pandemic, how would you say that social media use has changed? I think we've relied probably more heavily on it just because we are turning more to technology because we don't have, uh, you know, stay at home orders. So what do we do when we're at home? Well, we're hopping on our technology, you know, and that includes social media. So I would just say there's a lot more of a reliance on it to probably keep in touch. Um, you know, and even like that includes zoom and, you know, uh, FaceTime and all that stuff to connect. Um, so yeah, I mean, luckily for it because, or, lucky we have it in a pandemic versus like the one that happened in the Spanish flu of 1918, you know, like where people weren't able to connect at all. So I think it's been a lot of great, um, it's added a lot of great benefit. Um, and we're just probably posting more or maybe less because we're doing less. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Would you say that, um, social media has been put to good use? 
the fact that so many people are at home using their platforms, they're able to um, tap into more resources when it comes to mental health? Sure. Yeah, I think, you know, you can find good and bad and if you're looking for good or bad, you know, so some people have really started to uh, post a lot of content that, you know, helps other people and in turn will help them. So that's been great. Yeah, I'm sure there's you can probably find a lot of other people who've turned to social media for not great things as well, but just like anything in life. Uh, Janelle, we would like for you to weigh in on that question as well. I have to agree with Brooke on that. I think that in the past year, we are way more dependent. Um, We're not even checking and tuning into television and the news for updates. We're waiting to see what's posted online on Instagram to see, you know, they even have City of Miami has their own Instagram page and that's where you can find out what the restrictions are. So people definitely are going more on social media to to get their, their news. Um, we're also going on there a lot to voice our opinions. I mean, 2020 was a movie with everything that happened with BLM and, um, you know, voting and everything like that. It was a big platform, big place where everyone was voicing their opinions, what they agreed on, what they didn't agree on. There were, you know, people fighting on Instagram or Facebook. Um, so I feel that we already were consuming and using Instagram more in the, in the past year. I think it's definitely like doubled or or tripled. It's like our focus. That's how we, that's how we run our lives. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Um, Does it scare you knowing how much you influence people on the internet? Initially, you don't really think about that until you start reading your direct messages, right? Uh, I know some, there's some people or influencers that don't pay attention as much, but I'm someone that definitely is always checking like the direct messages see what people are saying or writing because i love connecting um with other people i mean that's the whole point you know for social media it's supposed to be the social aspect of it um and it doesn't scare me but i do realize the impact now and i am more mindful when i can um and i think that a lot of us are also growing in the process and growing in front of in a strangers basically um so there is going to be some growth to that as well as you learn along the way like you may express yourself one way and you don't realize how that affects another person so it doesn't scare me but i've adjusted to it that's good uh this question is as a group um do you often question yourself because of the things that you see online and we can go with lexi to start off with i think a few years ago, I majorly compared myself to things on social media. Um, it, I used to be a very hefty girl growing up and I was constantly made fun of. So of course, seeing millions of girls with perfect bodies and getting millions of likes on their photos really hurt. Um, it made me feel like I wasn't enough for people. Um, but I think as time has come on, not even within the last year where like we're like all body positivity, Um, I kind of just started focusing on myself and I started learning self-love. Um, I went through a lot of depression because of social media and bullying and things like that. So I think over time, more recently, I don't, because I'm aware that a lot of people edit their photos to in a certain extent. And I know that people don't always, I know like a lot of my friends who only post like the happy things and they're like me who have like a very dark past. And so Um, I think in the past I did, but so much like recently, not, not really. Um, For Janelle, how does the stigma that as an influencer, you must live a perfect life make you feel? I think that at first it was, you know, it it definitely affects you like in in a negative way, right? And to this day, um, and I relate a lot to what has been said here is that it gets frustrating. You know, you even you could lose yourself, you can lose your purpose on what it is that you're doing, why it is that you're posting these things, because you see that for whatever reason, like these other individuals that are showcasing themselves in bikinis or whatever, like are getting an audience much quicker. So then you start to like devalue or like, I don't know, you start to question yourself and and your motive and your purpose. I think that again, with my journey on social media I've also grown since I decided that I wanted my platform or my page to not only be a highlight reel 
to at least dedicate one day out of the week to make people that come across my page feel good like when they're leaving it or learn something about mental health awareness it's definitely changed and i look forward to breaking the stigma that we're not all perfect um so yeah <laughs> A lot of people uh, who do follow influencers need that kind of sense of like a reality check that just because you do have a lot of followers and you have a lot going on that you are to a normal person just like them. Do you often question yourself because of the things you see on social me on online or social media? Um, I would love to get your uh, thoughts on that, Brooke. Even you being a mental health specialist, does it still affect you? You were to ask me that probably 10 years ago when I was in my 20s. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think now it's not just because of age, but just because of, um, you know, one, I just want to kind of say, Lexi, thank you for just being vulnerable. You know, I think it takes a lot of courage just to be honest about that. And Janelle, I want to point out if that's okay, like, it's awesome that you're realizing you want to drive a perp, like, drive a purpose-driven, um, you know, platform and use your responsive, your power with responsibility, you know? So I think that's great. Um, Thank you. It doesn't make me question, like, what I see on social media doesn't necessarily make me question, but um, I will say I'm not immune to thinking, like, oh, they can afford that house or they can go on those vacations and I can't. Um, or, you know, here I am working, you know, a lot. So that's kind of what the extent is for me now. How have the responses from people online impacted your mental health? I understand, Brooke, you say you're kind of over that phase in your life where those type of, um, that type of criticism doesn't really matter anymore, but was there a time in the past where it did affect you? Not too much, to be honest. Um, when I was in college, uh, Facebook had just become a thing. And so I remember, you know, you had to have like a, an edu email address in order to sign up and it was very much college related so i'm kind of dating myself as, as i speak I realize. <laughs> um but you know facebook and then myspace and uh, anyways long story short it, it was kind of a platform where you really just got to like connect with people um it wasn't so much uh, what it's evolved to today where it's like you know influencers have a lot of power and influence over people um so i think to be honest, not so much for me. How about you, Lexi? I'd say online, I've never had like a huge following, like even right now, like I'm like around 2000. Um, the number used to be super important to me and now it's not so much. I think like over time, I just kind of gave up on the whole social media thing. There's phases where I go through just deleting it. Um, comments, not so much. I think I've just realized that social media isn't everything that you see. Um, for example, like there's a lot of those friends who you don't speak to in years and they talk about you behind your back in negative ways. But when it comes to social media, they're the first ones to comment on your photos like, wow, you look stunning. And you kind of start to see true colors through it. Um, but in terms of comments, I, I've never really had hate comments. It's more been personal bullying um, in person. So when have you known that it's time to take a break off of social media, Janelle? Oh, when I'm on it for way too long, or, you know, you just start picking up the signs and your like behavior um, as well. Like if you don't, if I don't feel like moving from the couch or getting out of bed, I'm just like, all right, you've like, this is like consumed way too much of your time. Um, my thoughts are getting darker or like negative. So it's just time to like, turn off the phone for a little bit. Um, I still haven't done, and I've been wanting to do it, uh, like completely do like, a, like a, a cleanse where I don't post at all for a month. I really admire people that do that. And the part, the part that's tricky for me, yeah, the, the part that's tricky for me though is just because it is part of what I do. It, is, it ties in so much hand in hand with my job. So in essence, it's like part of my job. So like taking a month away from that or disconnecting is like, really hard but i'm sure at some point i'll get to do that um but i will do like a day off or even up to a week off if i'm if i'm on a trip or something like that i try to like enjoy the moment like get the content or whatever it's need to do and then put the phone away and enjoy yes that's good you're aware yeah. um for brooke there are pros and cons to 
technology and social media. Uh, but what are your tips that you would give uh, people or you would want people to hear? Like Lexi mentioned, monitoring your time on it. You know, I think um, as a clinical director at a place where we focus on addiction, you know, uh, technology addiction is now kind of a thing. So just monitoring your time, whenever your behavior becomes obsessive and or your thinking becomes obsessive and your behavior becomes compulsive, um, that's probably like an indicator that, you know, I'm really kind of a slave to this thing, whether it's your phone or you name it. Um, so just being in mindful that you're always in control of that rather that, than it controlling you. Um, and to not think that um, everything you see uh, on this like 2D, you know, image is, is really the whole story. Um, again, comparing, stay away from that. Um, and live life, be present, you know, there's a big wide world out there. And I think things that are happening in real life and um, in 3D, you know, are really where it's at. So. Yes. How are behind the scene interactions affecting the way that people interact in real life? I think we are becoming more and more a society that is dependent on this like interface from you know, this virtual standpoint as we're doing right now. Um, in some sense, I think it's making us less present and less like open to, you know, meeting people and taking a look at like the clouds and oh, look at that like bird over there, you know what I mean? So we're a little more, um, just a little more focused that way. I think too, the other thing is like, you know, before technology was just uh, part of our vernacular and all we know, um, people had to like, knock on people's doors or you know go find a way to like f have human interaction and now i think the risk we have is um people might think that oh well i'm so socially connected i've got you know uh, forty thousand followers that means like you know th but would those people actually like be there for you if you're having a hard time or struggling or needed a, a real shoulder to cry on and be there you know so making sure that we have that human interaction because there's you know, it doesn't satisfy our, from a neuroscience perspective, um, our brains are wired for connection. And although social media uh, connects us in some way, you don't have that human to human like interface. Mm -hmm. Lexi, have you personally noticed any changes in society as a whole? Uh, so to say maybe when you were younger as opposed to now? I'd say, yeah. I mean, I miss the days back when like Instagram was like, you're posting a picture of like you taking a big bite of pizza. And that was like what everyone wanted to see was like a blurry picture with some weird filter on it. Mm -hmm. And now I feel like everything you can, you don't see anyone nowadays without their phone, whether it's the gym, whether they're at the beach, whether they're on vacation, like everyone's always capturing every single moment instead of just being in it. Um, like what she said earlier, where she has to like put time down for herself like a lot of people don't do that like I know a lot of people even in like my circle who like have just become so overwhelmed with social media and the image that they portray um so I feel like the interactions between you and like your friends or your classmates or anything is just completely different now it's all about social media like for example TikTok now like everyone's relating everything to TikTok um I don't think people have really realized how much social media and technology have taken over our lives until you actually sit down and talk about it Brooke, how about you? What are your thoughts in um, noticing any changes in society as a whole? Um, depression rates have increased, especially if you take a look at um, young adolescent women or, or young women. Um, it's doubled in the last uh, 20 years, actually. Um, suicide rates as well, like 100 uh, percent more, you know, so I would say from a mental health standpoint, you know, just making sure that that is not, um, don't have false ideals based on, you know, what you see on online. Um, also, you know, you hear about like people going into uh, plastic surgeons and asking like, I want to look like this filter, you know, it's like, that's not real though. That's face tuned or that's like a, you know, not real. Um, so I think like making sure that we don't lose sight of um, what is real and um, what might be altered, you know, for aesthetically pleasing uh, images. Janelle, um, do you feel like the content that you post at times does encourage you to be a better person? Yeah, I, I try. 
I, I definitely do like keep it in mind. And there is some weeks that I'll look at my page and I'm like, I'm just posting cute pictures, <laughs> you know, <laughs> uh, like it, it is, it's very much, you know, it's, it's something that I've been talking about a lot is that self-awareness. It's really, really, it's really important and being able to recognize it and pinpoint what, what that is. But I think that I do, I'm fortunate because I've been reading about it. I'm, I'm you know, I've been trying to grow, work on that personal growth where I can recognize that, but not everyone in my circle or, you know, people that I follow, I don't think that they take the time to do that too and recognize what it is that they're posting. Yeah. And would you say that social media does have its benefits? Absolutely. I think that with everything, um, I actually had done a study. Um, I did like a whole two part series on like the wear and tear of technology. So, but we go into like the, the pros and the cons, you know, obviously right now, I know that they have briefly mentioned it, you know, besides the fact that there's like technology addiction, there's also like the physical, um, you know, we're getting uh, digital um, um, dry eyes from using our phones so much. Text next is a thing, um, you know, the chiropractors like having to fix these like text like next because you're like looking down all the time. But the, the positive side of it, um, not to divert too much, is the fact that you can find the right people that are sharing like the right messaging on it um i think it's i always uh, preach this too it's just like what are you consuming and it's really important to clean your feed um unfollow the people that don't make you feel good and follow the things that do make you feel good um and that's like a good way to get that control back on on your feelings and like what it is that you're consuming great Brooke, if we didn't have smartphones and social media like we do today, do you think our collective mental health would be better off or worse off? That's a tough one to say, especially following a, you know, this past year of the pandemic we've been in. I, I just imagine like if we didn't have technology, um, how really truly disconnected we would be, you know, and lonely. Um, would we be better off? No, because I think, you know, it's all about growth and, and science. And I think it's only going to get greater and greater. You know, I think there's um, so much inspirational content that you can find and kind of like what you're saying, um, Janelle, about, um, you know, follow stuff that makes you feel good, that, that serves you, that lifts you up. You know, I think that there's such a benefit in that. And um, yeah, I'm pro technology. Um, but as long as you kind of, you know, make sure it serves you. And for the last question as a group, um, is there anything else any of you would like to add or put more insight on? I think that in conclusion, my dog crashing right of you. Um, like in conclusion, it's a, a, like too much of anything is bad, right? So when it comes to social media um, and our mental health, it's important to have a balance and getting outdoors and, and enjoying life. And then, you know, looking at the positive side of it, or you can connect with old friends or you moved away and they're, you know, in another state, you could see what they're up to. Um, so just, just that balance is key. Balance is key. Sorry for my Husky interrupting here. <laughs> I, second, I second the balance is key, you know, with everything in life, like not letting it consume you, you know, everything in moderation making time for uh, real life interactions because there's nothing that can suffice or, you know, substitute. Um, but overall, you know, like, let it, let it work for you. Uh, don't become a slave to, to social media, you know, but taking the good and leaving the rest. <laughs> Great. How about you, Lexi? I just think that it's important for people to understand, like, I give props to influencers. I could never do it. I think that that's like an amazing thing that some people do, especially like what she was saying where like she wants to like put out a positive message. A lot of like influencers don't think that way. And so that's amazing. Um, but I think it's also like for people who aren't influencers, I think it's important for them to realize like social media and like your social media present isn't what defines you. Um, I think a lot of people struggle with that and they want to hit like certain numbers, certain light counts, um, little things like that. Um, it's just really important to understand like, you're worth more than your image on social media. Well, that's all the time we have. I want to thank our guests, Lexi, Brooke, and Janelle for joining us today. You're on your boat. 
Your engines are dead. You're starting to sink, and you can't get a cell phone signal. Thankfully, you have a Marine VHF radio on board tuned to Channel 16. The Coast Guard and other boaters monitor distress calls on Channel 16. A radio is the best way to call for help. Don't assume a cell phone will work. Communication is your lifeline. Be sure you're heard. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. What are you doing? What are you looking for? <laughs> Yo, Scott. Hey. I'm heading out, man. You want to ride? No, I got my car, but I actually really need to go to the bathroom. You know what? I was just in there. The line is like 10 people long. You know, I think I'll just... Dude, are you okay? You wouldn't believe what I was just thinking. I, I am definitely buzzed. Yeah. I think I will take this and I will take that ride home. Smart man. Did you see how that dog was looking at me? Here's to the things that can keep us safe. And now, those that we carry with us everywhere will bring us wireless emergency alerts. With the unique sound and vibration, you'll be in the know wherever you are. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. <laughs> Thank you for watching On Point. You can follow us on social media at CSUN On Point. You can hear us on KCSN 88.5 FM on Sunday mornings. You can also watch us on LA 36 and Santa Clarita Valley Television from Catherine Hernandez and producers Emily Brubaker, Dalen Simmons, and Diane Zermenio. I'm Mary Pronian. <laughs>